Hi, welcome back to my channel, Antoinette here. This is part two of my um, video installment for the hashtag Past Lives Club September. It's actually week three of the Past Lives Club, um, but I did one and two kind of intermingled, is that the right word? Mix into each other. Um, and part one mixes through each one that I do further on. So therefore I've chosen to call them part one, part two, rather than week one, two, three. Um, in case that gets a bit confusing for people. I do do things back to front sometimes. Um, so this is one that's been very beautifully set up and is running through the Facebook group by Amethyst Ascension, Divination of Spirituality. She has created this free digital journal for people that are joining in to use, which is amazing. And um, Archetypes was week one in the group. Um, week two is identity, time frame, and location. Week three is faith, love, and trauma. So I've already done my video for these, and th today's video is going to be on faith, love, and trauma. Um, I'm not going to go too in-depth. It's more just showing you my cards and putting them out to help inspire people and to show a kind of different way of reading things. This is my way, so you may do you, and um, we all get different things out of the cards, which is what is most exciting, and that is the thing most of us have found fascinating is watching people interpret their own cards and pulling out their stories because um, there's no right and no wrong way. We all get different things. It's it's really um, been quite lovely to see. So if I go to... Um, as I had done previously, I have already pulled the cards um, because I did it with my friend, and I've got like some rough notes, but just for the sake of video so you can see, I'm going to put them down and talk through um, what's going down if um, that's not too... Um, if it doesn't offend anyone. So I have put my spread into my journal, so it's there, but I haven't actually written any of my kind of thoughts and feelings in this video. I'll use to get that out and then I'll come back and probably take out what I say in the video and put it in the side. So that's what we're doing today. So moving straight on, I'm using exactly the same decks as I used in part one. So I have the Oracle of Place, what's the tea oracle, the career and money oracle, the character oracle, all from Amazon, and I am using the um, Lilith and the Machine deck from Lilith and the Machine for Tarot. So first question in this, um, so for my faith, um, when my friend pulled the cards, which I don't own, which is from the Uncover Your Past Lives Oracle, I had a celestial faith with Explorer and Maritimer as the um, words. So it's on the Maritimer card with Explorer, and then the um, actual faith was under Celestial. So the, the instant thought was, oh, is, is that like stargazing? <laughs> um, the out there thought is, am I a star being, star child? Am I alien? Don't know. <laughs> um, and then first question, how important was my faith to me? So for this one, I have the seven of wands. So we can see a really kind of strong, fierce person. So defending their faith, basically, aren't they? Um, it was quite evident here. So that's my first card. So then I chose a what's the T card to go with this. I wanted to know exactly what that person, that card's all about here. And I get love triangle, um, third party, multiple lovers, choices. Choices, I think, is probably more I'm thinking love triangle, as in the love for my faith, me, the world around me, and maybe partners. So it felt like maybe a third wheel in, in, in my life. I don't know. Um, but an important part of my life, perhaps. Um, maybe too important at that point. Who knows? But yeah, it, it felt like it's um, an important point to my life. And I have... In my room card, I have a triangle. So I just thought that was kind of interesting with room, obviously, all the feminine connotations that go with that and love and sex and everything. And then I've got a love triangle there. So I just thought it was interesting. And again, I have like the red hair, red jacket, red in my card. So starting to see things linking together. Um, and I think, yes. So I have written down in my rough notes, I've wrote the word Trinity. That was one of the first words that came into my head. And then I have put moon phases, growth, third wheel, as I've said. Um, how did it make me feel? So I have the eight of cups for this, which is a very beautiful card, lovely starry skies. 
and I pulled a what's the tea oracle. I've got hustling, making it rain, being focused, um, getting it. So there are other words on there, but it doesn't mean all the words are um, pertinent to my reading. So it's me pulling what I feel are important to me. So from these two cards, I felt that um, the word focused is very important off this card and perhaps less connected to humanity, more yearning for a better place to be. And again, I am appear to be stargazing. So with that celestial, keeping that in mind, looking like I'm stargazing. So am I looking to a place? And I know people in this lifetime I've come across, people who say that they don't feel like they belong here and they feel they belong somewhere else and they're yearning to be at another point in time. And I'm just wondering if that's what I have here, whether I know that I want to be somewhere else. Um, so that was quite curious. I don't think I have much more to know. I haven't put anything else really there. Um, and then the third question is, how did I act because of my faith? And I have the magician. So um, I've already said in week one, part one, that I felt like I was perhaps some kind of magical person, maybe had some sorcery, seer, definitely magical abilities. Now I have the fact that I'm a magician, um, helping me act because of my faith. So my faith is making my ability to act, do, be, see, create um, quite strong. And then... Oh, yeah. And then from a... <laughs> Oracle aspect, loads of cards throughout the deck. So I wasn't going to take them all, but actually I felt that was, um, when I was putting them away, I had like a weird buzzing. So it's like, okay, I can't put them away. They are important. I do have to keep them. Um, I don't know if anyone else has that. So I have the Fireman, which I had to come out on the first round. So I did put all my cards back into shuffle for this round and layer up. So I'm layering up on each week um, with my cards. So I have the Bravest, Heroism, Sacrifice. We have the Repairman, Repair, Restore, Restart, Renovate. I have the learner, so seeker of knowledge again is in here, inquisitive progress, um, being an aspirer and an explorer. From a gang perspective, I've put Brotherhood of Shadows, Underworld Transactions, not really thinking violence or criminality. Doctor, healer, um, certainly came to mind. And from a lawyer's perspective, we've got um, defensive keeper of justice law cases. So all of these cards came out for this one actually I put that one there just because it's so many cards for you to see and um really yes yeah, so I've put down for this the fact that we have the keeper of justice healer coercive uh fixer and sacrificial so that's how I decided that it felt like my um my actions were because of my faith. It felt like whatever I'm doing, some of it's sacrificial, which would go, would maybe go hand in hand with certain types of ritualistic um, workings for somebody. Um, with the doctor and the healer aspects, I'm thinking again back to that nature based working with what comes off the ground, healing people. So um, it's just that thought process that's like kind of, it keeps coming around, it's in the back of my head. Last question for this spread, what did I use my faith for? So for this, look, I got the moon. <laughs> um, so I was just like, I have a moon, I have stars, we've had celestial, we have magician, we're working magic, I have the moon. Um, I was just like, I can't really ignore the pointers to what's on the deck um, rather than reading the moon as base value. And then I used the career one for this for what did I use my faith for I felt a career type card and then I got another moon with a bat so I've got the flexibility you need to see in the dark to maneuver the coming changes while it seems extreme just hang in there this too shall pass so again that felt like moon phases the changing of the phases um forwarding something um so I have put you know being able to see the moon allows us to see in the dark so a full moon um, lights up the garden beautifully gives us that sight in the dark it also allows us for navigating, um, guiding, 
it um, when it illuminates the darkness, it allows us to see unseen things that we may otherwise hurt ourselves on a trip over. And then I have written magic, uncovering mysteries and truth with the moon. So that's kind of where I've got to. So I'm uncovering stuff. I'm so it takes me back to the magician, the seer, um, divining of some description from my faith. So the faith is a very strong thing. And as my location was a um, lost civilization, so when I looked up lost civilization, um, the last collapse of civilization was 1177 BC. But there were other things about civilization in amongst that. But a place lost to humanity, a lack of knowledge of unknown place, could be a lost civilization i.e. the East Islands, um, the lost city of Atlantis, uh, you know, places like that, the magical places. And the one that I couldn't remember the name of, somebody has mentioned it and popped it down underneath my last video. Thank you very much. And I still can't remember what you said. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but that, that, that was what I'm thinking. Easter Island, that's a, I, I'm fascinated with Easter Island heads. I always wanted them in my gardens. Um, so that's a curious thing. So the next one is love. Moving on swiftly. And for love, I am a widower or a widow. Um, my card for love was magic. And the key word for that was sorcerer or sorceress. Um, so obviously the widow being my main love card so how did I lose my person? Did I lose them to ill health? Was it death? Um, at that point, have I resigned myself to be single for the rest of my life due to loss being great in my soul? And what is my loss? So is it my soul partner that I've lost? Um, these are just questions. And I've just watched Rachel's um, video. because She's just put hers out. And this is kind of similar to what she was saying. Um, some other notes that my friend gave me from the book is um, like query being a magi, so spiritual manipulation, astrology or alchemy with regards to sorcery and sorceress. Um, believing that you deserve more than what is handed to you, question mark. And what is greed that caused the death of a loved one? So what caused the death of my loved one? Because obviously I had a greed in my first video. There was a, um, the greed with the downfall of civilization. Moving into my cards. So again, I'm sticking with the same cards because I found these cards to be really strong in answering questions, so I'm happy. How did I experience love in my childhood? I got the Queen of Cups. And I don't know if you can see here, it's like a viewing gallery in her crown. Really quite beautiful. So for my Queen of Cups and my viewing gallery, so that feels a bit cold. And um, what's the tea? What's wrong with my Queen of Cups type thing? I've got moving and I've got boxes. So what I'm thinking is compartmentalising. Um, there's lots going on in the peanut gallery there. Um, there's also this, with the Queen of Cups, we have the Patience. Um, I'm thinking maybe um, kindness was experienced as a child. And, um, but when I'm talking about peanut gallery, I'm thinking I have my own peanut gallery following me. Have I already, my magical experience is already there. I can see perhaps my ancestors, you know, sixth sense, I see dead people type thing. Have I got my ancestors and my loved ones around me? So am I never alone? Am I always surrounded by people showing me great love and care? Um, these are just, you know, my thoughts coming out. Um, uh, yeah, definitely I put like ancestors, my own, my own like peanut gallery following me ancestors. But with the boxes, I've put compartmentalizing. So we learn at a young age to start compartmentalizing things, don't we? Um, and that's what I felt was with the boxes. So compartmentalizing what's going on here, what I'm experiencing, what I'm seeing, what I'm showing, who I am, how I allow myself to be seen. So I feel like the love is much like your behavior. 
you can only behave certain ways in certain circumstances, like behavior is only acceptable in certain places, if that makes sense. You know, church, you must act this way. Library, you must act this way. Um, school, you must follow these rules and so on and so forth. That's kind of sort of my stance of my thought process here. How did I experience love in my adulthood? So I've got the five of wands. So obviously we know five of wands is quite a confrontational card. Um, so we know we've got some confrontation. And it's fiery, as you can see, with all the red. And the four of cups came out again. So we've got that sort of detachment there as well. And from my what's the tea, I got moving on to go with those. And um, my thoughts here, so I've got like, we've got competitive, detached, moving on next, dissatisfied, vying for attention, object of desire, query abuse. So something here is causing me emotional abuse because I've emotionally shut down. I've been abused in some way, shape or form, and I've shut down with the um, love in my adulthood. Have I? Yeah, so I don't know what type of abuse I've received in my adulthood, but someone has abused me at some point and I've been shut down. Now, this one takes me back to... Let me just see if I can find it. In my identity, question two, how did my partner see me in this life? And in my identity, question two, I had the four of cups and this kind of um, paternal authority. I felt like it was on there. Um, so now I'm wondering if my partner picked me up from a broken place and fixed me or, or tried to fix me, tried to nurture me. Maybe fix is the wrong word. Maybe that's too strong a word. But, you know, certainly try to show me um, another way to be, another a way of finding myself again. Number three, how did I express love to others? So I've got the star, so that's a beautiful card. It's all very lovely, isn't it? <laughs> and then I had the farmer, cultivation, harvest and land. Um, so I just put perhaps cultivating relationships. So being taught to recultivate myself, I feel like maybe then I'm cultivating relationships around me or finding out who I can and can't trust now because um, life years and years ago was brutal. Um, people often took what they wanted, did what they wanted. So although we talk about civilization being civilized, civil, um, it wasn't always so. People were a bit more animalistic, I think, in some of their behaviors. Um, I mean, we have that today as well, but uh, we see it acted out in films. Now, whether that's a true reincarnation of films and past, or if that's just a um, complete fallacy and made up story, I, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know how to tell or not, but <coughs> we're certainly, it's portrayed as um, past civilizations being very kind of wild and animalistic and sexual in nature and, you know, not a lot of, sacredness to um, sexual desires, I suppose. <laughs> I think that's the best way I can put it. Um, so what was my love for others like? And I've got the Ten of Cups here, which is a beautiful card. We've got two people. We've got like, you know, castle in the sky, rainbows, a very, very beautiful card. So my love for others. And then I have security guard, patrol keeper, watchman, service provider with the traveller. Secret of Horizons, Adventure, Experience, Long Journey. And what I've written was, it was um, one of my, you know, my love, what did I say? Yeah, what was my love life like? My love life was my wealthiest thing. It was perfect. Um, in fact, possibly even a great love. This kind of had me started to feel like it was my great love. So back to that word, soul, person, soulmate, uh, companion, you know, my life companion. Um, and I felt like great love was experienced. Um, so 
it gave me security, security guard, taking out that word. So it gave me security. I felt like I was provided for, um, watched over, looked after, nurtured. Um, they came with me. You know, we we did everything together, possibly. Um, Secret of Horizons adventure experience. So I've already uncovered that I was a bit of a traveller. And that's where I felt like this was. So they, they followed me. But... I know I lost them possibly at a younger age, it feels like, with the cards. It just feels that I lost them young. I didn't have them throughout my lifetime. And um, that's my question then, is I wonder what happened to lose this moving forwards. So my final section for um, today's video is trauma. So again, using the same sets of decks, so for the trauma, my um, my trauma was physical sexual abuse. Takes me back to this set of cards here that I've talked about in love. And we are on the psychic card with high priestess as the additional um, keyword to my trauma. So seeing what I see here, seeing what I see here and what I saw on my previous identity. How was I affected by this traumatic event in my life? So I've got eight of swords, so quite severely affected this, this quite severely affected me. And I think I said in part of my identity, I felt like maybe I was somebody that people felt attracted to, not because I wanted to be attracted, but they saw me as some kind of desirable object. So I'll let you put the dots together with where I'm hinting I'm going next. I don't want to create trigger warnings um, and, you know, things that might upset other people, but just to be warned. From um, my character oracle, so I wanted to know, because it's character-based now, I've got drunkard, alcoholism, addiction, avoidance, abuse. Four of Cups definitely gives me the avoidance feelings. Um addiction query drink um there are alcoholics in my family now um although they wouldn't admit to it they, they deny that vehemently um but there's definitely alcoholism in our family i could probably easily become an alcoholic if i wanted to if i wanted to drink every day but um i do actually value my liver so i wouldn't and um, with addictions i'm not so sure but abuse it's difficult i don't feel like i abuse others so i feel like i try to be a better person based on this moving on um, not allowing it to define me so much but obviously it has it's shackled me it's left me in a dark space um but yeah it's just it definitely has left me wanting something so whether that wanting something became um the improvement of my magical prowess and how i move forwards i don't know but it's thoughts, right? These are just thoughts. How did I deal with it? So I have the Two of Swords and the Eight of Wands. And two Oracle cards. So I have Happiness Hater and Fishing for Compliments. So what are we thinking here? Happiness hater, needing constant reassurance to be able to move on, possibly. Because um, we're having problems moving on, but we need to move on. <laughs> so using the Four of Cups, the Eight of Wands, and my avoidance skills may have been my way of moving on. So going back to my compartmentalizing in um, under the previous set of um, cards for love. So with my trauma and the love, compartmentalizing what's happened in order to be able to close off and move on, but leaving me with perhaps an insecurity, needing to, you know, that reassurance um, from people. Take me back to that father figure with my previous four of cups in identity. Um, question three, what did I learn from this? Queen of Queens. That's a good card. Shine. Your light irritates their demons. 
So we're back to like a coins and earthly material kind of realm as well. Um, so how to better myself, how to be stronger, how to be in control of mind, body, focused. So um, the more focused, the more in control I am, the more I'm going to shine, the brighter I'm going to be as a beacon or a message to other people. Perhaps I'm even bringing in my power and um, allowing that to ripple in in the um, environment within which I'm living here. I'm kind of imagining like some really magical <laughs> place, you know. Um, I just can't quite explain it. I can almost see it in my mind. I can see... Um, Something akin to the big ship that floats around in the sky in the um, film about star. What, what is that called? It's got Michelle Pfeiffer in it. She's a witch. Write your comments below. That kind of feel for the ship and things. Um, almost Mad Max Third World-esque. I, yeah. It's that sort of feeling I can't I can't put a word on it but that's what I'm seeing is it's there but this is a long time ago obviously this isn't the future this is past past life um last question how does this affect me now so I have the fall interestingly with a reader so this one's out again second time out again seeker of knowledge knowledge pursuer explorer of information with a butcher ruthless cruelty and slaughter um, two very strong, interesting cards. So caution. So there's a caution with others. Um, still keeping my disconnect. Surgically with the butcher. Surgically removing people from my life if they've wrong-footed or wronged me in some way. Now I'm not putting up with it. I'm not allowing whatever happened behind this set of cards in the previous spread to happen again. Um, I'm going to surgically remove you from my life. Maybe I'm cutting cords. Maybe I'm um drawing puppets i don't know but with the knowledge and lessons i've learned already i'm not going to be treated quite as foolishly moving forwards so i'm slightly more prepared i'm not stepping out foolhardy i'm stepping out prepared with this information behind me And that is it for today. That is my week three. So um, I've got a few more spreads to do and then a conclusion to this. I hope you've been enjoying it coming through and just seeing how the cards go down. Um, but of course, I haven't quite woven all of my web into what I see and what my synchronicities are. I can already see some of them. Um, but I'm a bit more cool minded about this as I'm doing it. So um, yeah, until the next one. Take care. Bye bye.